Hey guys, video here. We did 24 T2 Tower 100% Delirious MFing today. We're just going over the profit margins, how we did it, what gear we use, the build, and so on. So what T2 Tower MFing is, is pretty much we take a T2 Tower map. Uh, it's rolled with 35 quality, does not consume sextants, and areas contain additional blight encounter. We also use the currency delirium orbs and fractured nemesis. Now you can get these areas contain additional blight encounter. If you want to make your own map, you can buy them off the trade site or you can farm Lyra Arthane. Uh, if you take this node, it says maps found in areas have a 10% chance to have an area that contains an additional blight encounter. So pretty much it's just free mob count to our maps. And so what we do to make or to run the maps is we use fractured fossils and bloodstains. And what happens when you use a bloodstain fossils, which a lot of people did not know in the previous leagues. And this has been a thing for a long time. A lot of standard MFers have been doing this. So basically it adds found items have a 10% chance of dropping corrupted in an area. And what that basically means is you will drop a crap ton of six links in your maps. So basically we run these maps with well, the way I have been doing it is with Gilded Harbinger, Gilded Ambush, Gilded Definition, and an Elder Scarab. Uh, and basically what we do is rerun it in Glenac, of course, because it's T2 Towers. We went with Torn Veil, Scent to Blood for all the beyond. We went with Twice Tempted and Temper Proof. That's why we run the Gilded Ambush Scarabs. And then also we run the Cultural Advancement for Incursion Monsters and areas that are at least magic. And for Watchstones. So for three Watchstones, we use Demonic Platinum Glenic Cairn Watchstones. So make sure they're Platinum. And you can roll Demonic, which is the Beyond Portals and areas have 6% chance to spawn an additional Demon. You run three of those, and then you run one Misinformation. And as you can see, the sextant that we use is unique monsters drop corrupted items. And this is pretty much guaranteeing that, you know, every unique monster, which when you have additional beyond demon spawning and so forth, and all the extra juice from 100% delirium maps, you're going to be dropping a lot of six links. Just for an example, in our 24 map tests, we have dropped 453 six links in a matter of just 24 maps. So that's just to give you an example of why this is so profitable and why we do it on T2. Because as T2, you can do this as a group or you can solo. The way I'm doing it right now is we run a Wind Ripper. Uh, you can use Greed's Embrace or what I'm using is a crafted chest with elevated item rarity and attack crit. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is my chat bullied me into making it. I'm not sure if this is better or if Greed's Embrace is better. Uh, but this definitely does add a little bit of extra damage compared to Greed's Embrace. So it kind of makes the map go flowing a little bit smoother in the beginning. Uh, for Amulet, we're using a simple Quant Amulet with some extra damage and reses. So we're res capped. Uh, Quiver, we are using Skill Chain and Gain Fizz is extra lightning. Uh, you can get away with using just a regular Corrupted Void Fletcher with like some random implicit that's not Pierce. Because you generally don't want to Pierce. And of course, all the other stuff is Sodimas, Gold Worms. We are using a Headhunter. We are not using Biscos. That's there as a debate. Uh, and then some Well Rolled Venters and this helmet as well. And you make sure you get Tornado Shot, fires an additional secondary projectile. And the reason why we did this helmet, it adds a lot of flat cold. And we're kind of a mix on uh, damages, as you can see here. We do actually a bit more lightning than cold. And the way we got Tornado Shot to feel so decently well in these T2 towers is we run this thing, Trinity Support. So the way Trinity Support works is supported skills that hit enemies, causing them to gain bonuses while you have resonance of all three elements. And to grant resonance of elements other than the highest one in hit. So basically the way we have it working is we have lightning and cold. So if you take a look at our minimum damage and maximum damage of both lightning and cold, they're very similar. So when we go and hit a pack and let's say one of the projectiles end up hitting lightning, well, I get resonance for fire and resonance for cold. And then when I hit one of the projectiles that have more cold damage, then I get lightning and fire and resonance. And that's how we get the triple resonance. So if we go to blood aqueducts, and this does count for every single projectile that comes out of tornado shot. So it's not something that you have to hit multiple times to gain. It's actually something that you can literally hit once and you'll actually have full resonance. So if we go here, hit a pack once, as you can see, we have full resonance. 
I'm not up to that just yet. So basically what it means to be at full resonance. So at full resonance, you get 5% more elemental damage per five of the lowest resonance. Well, each resonance has a cap of 50. And since they're all max, that's a simple 50% more elemental damage. And then you also get 20% alley pen for while each resonance is at least 25. And then also an additional 15 increase attack and cast speed. So this one support gem alone pretty much gives us 70% more damage while also giving us a little bit of increased attack and cast speed, which is insane. And that's why we're using tornado shot instead of lightning arrow like a lot of people do for their solo MFing. Uh, skill tree. Uh, we're basically doing the basic. We have a lionized fall here. You go up into assassination and all that. Grab some life nodes. Uh, King of the hill. We dropped some of the other nodes that some people take. And uh, we went ahead and grabbed command of the elements. And we added in a cluster. And if y'all are wondering, this is a split personality with strength in it. Because if I take this out, I'm too stupid to use my gems. And that gem is mainly the uh, awaken added lightning damage support. This does require a lot of int. But this is what's letting us use the trinity support. Because if you look now, my lightning damage maximum is only a couple hundred above my minimum cold. So the likelihood of me staying max resonance is a lot less. So that's why we use Awaken Add Lightning. So for gem supports, in case people are wondering, we use Inspiration, Trinity, Wed, GMP, Awaken Add Lightning, and Tornado Shot. And that is links for that. And our offhand, we're using Empower, Increased Duration, Enhance for our Val Haste. We got second win in dash, and that's just so to get ourselves moving and booming when uh, we don't have headhunter buffs. Um, but yeah, pretty much so to go over a cap of the 24 maps. So over 24 total maps, we have made a total profit of 20,000 chaos. And this is including, we had two lucky drops of shackles that had Ellie weakness on it. Those sold for 17, 17x each. So if you take out 34x, we still made, you know, of uh, 165x over 24 maps if you were to consider those lucky drops so 24 maps we made two doctors four nurses so two and a half doctors essentially in 24 maps uh got a lot of alterations now do note this was a test we did not have augments augments in bulk do go for a bit but that also takes a lot more time in clicking which i am a very lazy man so i don't like doing any of that so and the sim splinters as well we did this sim splinter pile that we have here is strictly from killing the bosses the simulacrum bosses because we don't have individual sim splinters uh attached or anything so this is this is just your basic pretty much picking up regals regrets scours chaos alterations and of course all the six links so as you can see the most profit from this is pretty much coming out of the doctors and mainly the six links and that is also why like i said the misinformation with the unique monsters drop crypto items is very very important without this you'll average probably i think i did a couple maps without it because uh i forgot to and i think i only dropped about 10 six links versus the average like 20 to 28 six links per map uh so definitely definitely need this is very necessary and if you're doing this also please use elevated sextants they are expensive but it will not feel that great so if you're not using nemesis 4 from an elevated sextants i would highly recommend just probably fracturing beyond on your t2 towers and running it that way because i know a lot of people have been running it that way with very good success as well uh but we're doing Nem4 and of course Beyond 8 and Alva. Now you can farm your own low tier Alva missions. It does not take that long. But like I said, I am a very, very lazy gamer. So if you were to say you had your own Alva missions, I would have just run ha Haunted Traders, of course, for more mob count. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I'll post a pace spin of this build profile in the uh, section below. I will post pretty much everything else that is needed uh any questions or anything like that feel free to comment below or visit me at my twitch which is twitch.tv sk cloudy thank you very much bye bye